Well, I'm going to start cutting wood. And I thought I haven't cut in for quite a few years. But what it is, see, this isn't actually on my land. This belongs to a cousin. And the trees are so thick in here that what happens is the smaller ones die out. You know, ones that are, let's like, say, that big around. They can't get up high enough to get enough light, so they die. And they stand there dead. So the wood is, you know, ready to burn. You just got to get them down and get it out. If you leave them too long, they fall down, and then they'll rot if they're in contact with the ground. But she's a jungle. But I know earlier this year I drove through here. Me and my brother hadn't been down here for quite a while. It's actually a really hard spot to get at. Uh, there's a, this is a road here, but it's really narrow. You know, there's trees real close. So my thought is I'm gonna haul them out of here with the tractor. You know, I'll cut them down, cut them into like eight foot lengths. I think eight foot is as wide as I can go and still manage to weasel them out of here. And even then, I'll have to chain them onto the bale forks to get them out. You know, uh, the easiest way to cut down here is always to cut them into the right length and load them in a vehicle and haul them out. But my theory is I can get more out of here before the weather turns bad. If I cut them into lengths and bring them home, and then I can cut them with the buzzsaw. But there's a lot of them in here. You know, looking at it, you don't realize it, but when you start walking around, there's all kinds of standing dead stuff. That bird's great. And like I say, most of them, they're like that big at the base. So you split them once or twice. You know, they're, they're easy to deal with. A lot of them you don't even have to split. But I'm going to have to do some scheme. I, I kind of had to cut my way down here. I'm trying to figure out a way because the regular road where it goes really steep up a, a real steep incline that's got sand on it so <laughs> it can be tough to get up. And it's a really roundabout road. And then hauling out of here, I got to go through three gates. So I think eight foot is as long as I can cut them and re expect to get out of here without losing half the load. But then, I, I, like I say, I'll probably have to put a chain around them anyway to hold them on the tractor because even the way that I came down is fairly steep. You know, because it's a high ridge all the way along here. You know, the land kind of goes in plateaus. But like I say, I haven't cut here for quite a while. And you can get a lot of wood out of here, like every 10 years you come through and clean it out. So I figured, well, this is the year to clean it out. But it ain't gonna be easy. Well, once I get them down, if I could find a better route because now, when I look down the road, I know, you know, like eight foot is about the max. Unless I, well, I could maybe scheme another way around, but it's tight in here. These trees grow pretty tight, which is why they die. But, but there's a lot of them in here. In fact, there's a nice big one right there. You can tell them, uh, it's easier earlier in the year, it was obvious how many there was. Now, if you look, you don't notice them offhand, but once you start walking around, you see them all over the place. Uh, I'd say like almost 10% of the trees are dead in here just because they don't get enough light. So I'll start knocking them down. But you can always tell them, you know, the good part is these grow straight, not a lot of forks. You know, they're uh, like a telephone pole. So you're not dealing with a lot of branches and a lot of Y's and stuff. It's pretty much a straight chunk of wood because it was reaching for this light, you know. But it'll be a lot of cutting. But like today, now all I'm going to do is cut them into 
to uh, like eight foot lengths, and then I'll come with that bale fork and haul them out of here. And I'm kind of smart. I got two saws along because this is not the kind of place you want to go to with one saw and then have a problem. But there's a lot of wood in here. Well, because there is there, and then there's a lot out here, but this, along this high ridge is where you really get them tall ones that, uh, from crowding. But, well, like I say, about every 10 years, we go through here and, and cut them out of here, the dead ones, but it just keeps coming more, you know, that, that struggle and then die. But it's good firewood. Just a tough spot. But the way I came down was I found a kind of a less of a slope, but then further in, then I get into the marrow spots again. So on the way out of here, I'm going to have to see if I can't find a, a spot that's a little bit wider. But there was branches and trees down on the road coming that way too that I had to cut. So I had to cut my way in, I'll have to cut my way out again. You know, just remove that dead stuff because they, they just fall, you know. And in fact, the uh, last time I come through here earlier this year, I had to move trees uh, that were on the road. But this is, like I say, a tight road. Uh, so there's a lot of these trees along this road that have got big chunks of bark off them from where people accidentally plowed into them. But it's good solid oak, and there is some ash in there too, but it's it's mostly oak. And right along the ridge line, there's some basswood. But it's probably been maybe 10 years since I cut in here, so I'm sure I'll find plenty. And I do see some that are laying down, and like I see a lot of them They'll be rotten on the outside, the inside will be solid, but they'll have some rot on the outside. But by the time we get them home, that'll all fall off. But she's going to be a lot of cutting. And I think before I go home, I'll have to load some up in here. Yeah, I, got, I see a lot of them in there. Yeah, I probably should have done this a little earlier when the leaves were on. It makes it a little bit easier, but not much. Like I say, you don't notice them until they start walking around in there. Then it's just dead stuff all over the place. So I'm using the 55 and I got that little Husqvarna along as the backup saw. Because most of these, they're going to be like that big, but like 30 feet long. So I cut them into like four eight foot lengths then they're easy to handle with the buzz saw yeah I, I, you know the more i look the more i see so uh, i got a busy day well i'm going to try to get as much out of here as i can before deer season starts or before we get another snow because in winter you, you can't get down here and get out of here again you know the only way then would be really you weren't going to get up that ridge, you'd have to go down another ridge onto somebody else's land and then go a long way around. You might make it out that way. You might, but I think there's a lock on that gate. And it is doable if a guy got in a real bind. But this is a place you really don't want to go down when there's snow on the ground. You stay up above that ridge. And even that's a little risky. Well, I got my work cut out for me.